Thank you. Much appreciation for all those involved with this creation. I would say I have a physics question. <laughs> but you're too smart for that. A, a lot of those have been answered. I do have one fill in the blank. Mass is to gravity as blank is to attraction. Is it attention? Give us the whole equation again. Mass is to gravity. Mass so is to gravity as blank is to attraction. Well, we've got to flip that. We have to say as vibration is to attraction, not as attraction is to vibration. Gravity is the consistent that mass responds to. Vibration is the consistent that everything else responds to. So your equation was flipped a little bit. So can it be a force of attraction be determined by using frequency in an equation? Yes. And humans haven't discovered that yet. Well, or they're they doing it all the time. They've discovered in different ways of content. They're rather. doing it. They just don't know it. They keep flipping their equations. They haven't generalized it to vibration for everything. They don't want it to be as simple as it is. I see. Okay. Throughout my life, now that I've lived a certain amount of time, per se, uh, there's been a energy signature. This energy signature could be described as a spectrum oscillating back and forth, such as a sine wave. Most of my adult life, going back into teenage years, I was on one, one side of the spectrum. I would say four or five years ago, switched to the other side of the spectrum, or the balance beam in the middle. Can you describe the spectrum in emotional terms? Yes, I will give you physical characteristics that are related with both sides of the spectrum. One side would be more stoic, some may say focused, although focus is always on both sides. Can you hold your thought just for a moment there? Yes. We want to go back and talk all over what you're talking about. But something important just came into the conversation that we want to emphasize. And that is when we ask you the question, because as you're talking about this spectrum and we ask you if you can give us some emotional description, if the scientists would allow there to be emotion in what they are talking about, then they're guidance would lead them right to where they want to go another one of my questions involves that if you leave the way the perceiver feels about it out of it then you have inconsistency in the way everything happens and that's what keeps them not believing that they have anything solid that they can stand on thank you for that you don't realize how much you affect everything and so when you're studying the manifestations without studying the reasons for the manifestations then all you end up doing is seeing the manifestations and sifting them into piles which then you evaluate and judge but then it's too late you've got to understand the emotional content of them while they are in the making in order to understand any of this physics stuff mm -hmm. yes mm -hmm. yeah going back to the sine wave if you were to Im imagine a balance beam in the center we like to do that. And the balance of any aspect of life could wanted be wanted and unwanted. Could be likened to that. Um, over Presence and absence. That's the balance. Yes. These two sides of the spectrum, though, something and nothing, are very differing aspects of my personality. It's almost like two different personalities. Aligned and not aligned. I enjoy both of them. It's not under aligned. the influence of source and not. One's not. Clarity, confusion. Those aren't harmonious with me. They're not both uh, sides of the spectrum are joyful. Yes. Then we're talking about two different spectrums. Yeah, yes. That's why I'm trying to We'll listen. Okay. Uh, one, one side of the spectrum, I'm very quiet, silent, stoic. Don't really want to ever talk to anyone. The other side, very expressive. Um, psychology may call this left brain, right brain. We would I call it in both ends of that spectrum in the aligned part of the equation and under the influence of source it's just that in the more animated part of it there's more momentum and in the quiet more withdrawn there's less momentum in emotional terms you are describing the difference between satisfaction or contentment and passion and enthusiasm and excitement and love thank you it's just more momentum but in both cases in the non-resistant side of the balance beam that we like to talk about but both are aligned both are aligned it's the balancing act. and further we give this analogy we'll be very brief about it envision being at the top of a hill San Francisco Bay is down there 
you take your car out of gear, you take the parking brake off, and you decide you want to give yourself a physics lesson. So <laughs> you bump your car from behind just to see what will happen. And then you know what's going to happen because this isn't your first rodeo. And so you stand out in front of it, you let your car bump up against you, and you stop it. And it was easy to do because there was so little momentum. But you wouldn't want to be at the bottom of the bay waiting to stop that car because you wouldn't stop it. So here on this emotional scale with despair at one end and ecstasy at the other in the center of it is contentment or satisfaction it's really this lovely place of control so if you are moving up the emotional scale let's say that you are in despair and then you move into revenge you feel better in revenge because there's more control and there's less resistance and when you are angry you feel better in anger than revenge because there's more control and there's less resistance until eventually you come and you could cross the other side of this tipping point into this satisfaction which is non-resistant now this is the thing that we want you to hear and we think it will influence what occurs to you next once you move in to non-resistance now you are under the influence of that broader knowing of all of the momentum of what your inner being knows. So in the absence of resistance, now the speed, and we mean by speed in this case, the amount of time it takes to move from contentment all the way up into some powerful, exhilarating emotion is very, very quick because in the absence of resistance, things pick up speed really, really quickly. Continue. Focusing in on something a little more personal, on the passionate end of the spectrum. I spoke to you back in April in Atlanta, speaking about voice and physical exercises relating to consciousness. Since then, I've been simply keeping myself open to opportunities for mm, harnessing and grounding in that passionate energy into something formable. In other words, you've been keeping yourself open to impulses. Yes. Uh, you have a lot of really good words. An impulse came open to try acting. Um, that's something I've never done before. A path quickly opened up. I went to an audition, and I'm in a play in my uh, hometown. <laughs> so I've completed that, and it, it has been wonderful. Acting is an excellent um, example of deliberate creating cutting out a lot of the noise of life and I'm appreciative of it I'm appreciative of the continuing vocal exercises I do I'm appreciative of the increased capacity of singing I can do I'm sensing a vibration within me that wants to hone in on something very specific that uh, when I do it I almost lose all awareness of uh, like everyday life something that would be labeled as creative genius. So what something if, along the lines of what Esther does, but m not the same content, not the same form. So many are doing that in their musical presentations. That is what's happening. They get into that under the influence of source. It's like when we say seeing through the eyes of source, singing through the voice of source, singing with the vibration of source, because you see, you've prepared your physical instrument and now you're just waiting for the inspiration to utilize that instrument in ways that it has not been utilized before that is exactly what i'm talking yeah. about and instead of looking at the entire broad spectrum sea of performing arts it seems like it would make sense to focus in to on just start where you are and let the inspiration from who you really are take you to the satisfying place that you may not even be able to specifically identify. And don't worry about giving it a label, let it develop into its own creation. Yeah, as you identify it in general terms, then the specifics of it will come before your label of it. And this is exactly what we're talking with physics. It's exactly the same conversation. Rather than deciding what it's going to be and trying to make the universe fit into your perspective of it, chill out and let the universe and what it is show itself to you as it is. 
So that's why step one, step two, step three are so important. Step one is life has caused you to put all of that into your vortex and it's there. And you don't even really understand the fullness of what is there. You understood the components as they went in one at a time, but you don't understand their relationship with each other, the cooperative component-ness of them and what the law of attraction and source energy has gathered. So you don't know what the potential manifestations are. You've given all the resources to it. And then in that quieted mind state when you're not trying to push the noodle and not trying to make it happen and not trying to dictate what it is in that attitude of trust you just tune in and allow it to flow through you and the thrill of that when it happens the thrill is in the discovery that's why you all came you understood the laws of the universe before you got here you didn't come to learn them you didn't come to fix a broken world you didn't see it as broken you came knowing that you would be inspired to newness that was unique to you and that you could control your vibration and then the newness would turn from thoughts to things and you knew that there would be great thrill in the discovery when it turned into a thing you also knew that it would be way fun along the way and so this is what we can sense just a little bit with you we want there to be satisfaction in nothingness before there's somethingness and most humans they don't want to be satisfied with nothingness so we say oh we don't mean really nothingness we mean maybe you can't see it in here and smell it and taste it and touch it but you sure can feel it yeah when I listened back to my recording from April I said to myself the first time I heard it I was speaking directly from my source when I came up here and started speaking to you. Why is it that I am still in full consciousness and believe I'm doing that and oh. Esther is not and she kind of blanks out where Well, it's not that different. She's not blanking out, she's busy. <laughs> is it focus you're talking about? I can sense that focus happening within me. Yeah. It's not that she's not hearing this. And when she goes to dinner with friends and they talk about what happened, she has almost full recall, not because she's remembering it, but because it begins occurring again all over again. And so the best way to allow that focus to increase in my own being, however, I want to express that in a creative expressive oh, don't way. You just really, really, as you acknowledge the existence of your inner being and its evolution and expansion that has been provided by your life experience, even in this life, don't you want all of that knowing to flow through you in a seamless way where there's no resistance within you so that the whole of you is present in the now. Ooh, that's what it is. But you don't get there by saying it's not happening. And you don't get there by saying it's not happening enough. You get there by saying, I'm so satisfied. I'm so satisfied. I'm so satisfied. And as you practice that neutral place of non-resistance, then you just begin having more and more of those experiences until you just expect to be satisfied and you expect to be brilliant and you expect ideas to flow and you expect things to turn out well for you. You expect to be in the right place at the right time. You just expect to feel good. You just expect life to be delicious every step along the way. And let's be real about this friends this turning thoughts to things every moment is a manifestation so in every moment thoughts are turning to things look at the things that have turned out with this look at this look at us all here in this magnificent place having this wonderful conversation this is manifestation every moment is every moment is a manifestation over which you have so much more control than most of you acknowledge it's wonderful. Thank you. I have one technical question. It relates to something you said earlier. I'm sure you're aware of this. If I mention it, a man that has transitioned by the name of David Hawkins established a con what he called consciousness scale by means of kinesiological muscle testing in humans. Familiar with it? Yes. Zero to a thousand logarithmic scale. To some extent. Okay. We are receiving it from you as you are aware of it. Mm -hmm. Creations all create, uh, he uh, defy or labeled a number of creations with a consciousness from zero to a thousand um, ideas, people of the past, human emotions to be included, similar to the human emotion scale from asking it is given. It would, uh, and they are attached to a number. Would that be a way to numerate human emotions yes. in order to manipulate them mathematically yes. and discover more yes. about? Yes. 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 This is a really good time for a segment of refreshment.